Welcome everybody to the New Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Colin McEwen. In this week's show, I'm at the Bay of Quinte in Ontario, and the targeted species, carp. This is a species I love to fly fish for, but I never get a chance to do it very often. What I like about the Bay of Quinte, there are big flats here, and there's big fish. 15, 20, 25, 35 pound specimens, and you can catch them on a fly rod. But you have to use stealth and certain techniques to catch them. I'm with guide Glenn Hales, and it's gonna be a great show as he teaches me how to catch these huge, giant carp. Stay with us. The new Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to Orvis Sporting Traditions, Ontario, yours to discover, Newfoundland and Labrador Outfitters Association, Algoma Country, Ontario Sunset Country Tourism Association, Scientific Anglers, Umpqua Feather Merchants, Superfly, Fly Fishing Made Easy. The region known as the Bay of Quinte is easily accessed by road and is conveniently located next to the pretty town of Belleville. With miles and miles of prime fishing waters that adjoin Lake Ontario, the Bay of Quinte is quite famous for its exceptional walleye and bass fishery. However, only a handful of anglers know about the incredible flats fishing for carp and even gar pike that is available. For those that love fishing the flats for spooky species such as bonefish, this is as good as it gets. Best of all, you can stay at reasonably priced accommodations and enjoy meals that fit every budget. Glenn Hales has lived in the Bay of Quinte region his whole life. Since he was a young boy, Glenn has always loved fishing and has developed into a hardcore angler with exceptional skills and understanding of this fishery. Several years ago, Glenn began to guide in the region for species such as steelhead and bass. But his real true love is stalking and casting to the massive carp that inhabit the flats of the bay. Fish on. Oh, I don't know. I got him in. Yeah, I saw this carp coming by. I threw it out in front of it. I saw him swim over to that. Oh. Had it around my reel. What the hell? So I have, saw this fish coming over and threw a course five feet in front of it and let the fly drift down. So I seen the fish go off to the left. Oh, using a nine weight. Nine weights are good for having, fishing for these bigger fish for their power and, because some of these fish can grow up to 30 pounds and you need a good rod, a good stiff action rod for it. You know what? This is a mere carp. It's a mere. This is a mere carp. It's a uh... 
not as popular as a common carp in the bay. There's very few of them. I've only caught maybe four or five in my life. This is probably number six. But this year I've been seeing quite a few mirrors. He might go for another leap, but I'll see. Get him down now. Awesome, good job. I would say a good 15, 18 pounds. Beautiful. <laughs> Carp love to eat a variety of foods, depending upon the location and time of year. Insect larvae, crayfish, snails, leeches, virtually everything in the water is on the menu, including minnows and small baitfish. In many places, anglers cast streamer patterns to carp, stripping them in slowly past their noses. Much like a bonefish chasing down a small crab or shrimp pattern, the take will often be soft. You have to almost feel the weight of the take before setting the hook. Like saltwater fishing, it is recommended you set the hook for carp in virtually the same manner, using a stripping and pull technique before lifting the rod for the rest of the set. This will ensure your hook takes in their mouth or lips. The next few days will truly be enjoyable as Glenn teaches me all the necessary skills I will need to fool, hook, and land these beautiful fish. So what we're doing is first thing in the morning and Glenn's got us quietly maneuvering into where we expect the carp are going to be. And one of the keys here is that we didn't just race up with the boat and put the electric motor right where the carp are. No, we, we came down the ways from where the carp are. Now we're quietly creeping up because these fish are very, very shy and very, very sensitive. And if there's too much noise, they scatter, they're done. And once they're spooked, they're done for a while, just like bonefish. So you've got to go in very, very carefully, quietly present your fly. And what we're looking for, those big carp tails up in there, rooting around, present the fly to them and get them to take it. It's difficult and it's exciting when you get one to take. So Glenn's found some fish. We've got perfect light conditions. Fish are between us and the shoreline and they're tailing. Yeah. And there's a couple of giants in there, isn't there? Yeah. Like well over 20 pounders. There's two of them right big there. Big dark shadows, with yeah. something around mingling. And we're looking for, for the ones that are actually almost sitting still or their tails up. They're the feeders, as opposed to the ones that are kind of circling around, right? That's right. Um, but you've got to make an accurate cast, and they're fairly long casts. Sometimes, as you saw with Glenn, uh, he's just flipping the fly out, and the fish takes it right there. But this is very much like bone fishing most of the time. It's going to be a reasonably long cast, and you're trying to get the right light conditions and the right visibility so you can see those fish at 30, 40, 50 feet away and not spook them with your presentation. See his tail up now? Oh yeah, I see get, it now. Get it right back, past, right, yeah. A little bit, uh, pull. No, no, don't drop, drop, he's, he's going that way. Oh, stop, slow down. Oh, I thought, got him. Oh, I saw him come one after oh. I saw him, he turned and. They're light. He hair. broke it off. Oh. And that's 12 pound test. 12 pound test. I definitely, look. Oh, I saw him come over. I see him turn over. Hey, and then he just lunged for it. <laughs> <laughs> Bad luck. Second break off. Oh. <laughs> it's killing me. That was like perfect. That was textbook. Man. It was. It nice, was. nice eyes, by the way, spotting that fish. I didn't oh. see, I could see the cloud, but that's another one over there, yeah. isn't it? Just strip it a bit. Strip it, strip it, strip it. No, drop it right there. Drop right there. Oh, wait, stop, stop, stop. Are you good? Ah, yeah, yeah, I see. Yes. Oh, I saw him take it. That was so cool. I saw him take it. All right. All right. Awesome. Here we go. <laughs> it was awesome. He, his head come up, and then I seen him, his head steer over to your fly, and I saw his lips open up. <laughs> Inhale your little nymph there. Good call on that. And we're into the backing. 
Wow. This is why I use eight or nine weight rods. Oh, feel the power of this. Oh, <laughs> that was sweet. I'm not sure if the camera got that, but that was perfect because the uh, I cast first time and it was short and Glenn told me to cast past him and I did and he could see the fly and I stripped it a few times and went past and fish lifted its head and swam right at it and took it. Oh, it was perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. When you could see his lips just go and oh, inhale that. Guy. So I'll get him back on the line. Could be a 20 pound fish. Yeah, it's a big one. It's got some body to it. Whew. I got a 12 pound tippet on this. Oh, he's gone right into the yeah. shore. There's okay. one little rock there you don't want to get. Yeah, I'm keeping it up. Now the weedy's picked up. Whoa. Okay, back on the line. I'll grab that weed for you. Okay. He's moving. Wow. That was really cool. This is so much fun and it's exactly like bone fishing. Going around. Okay. Oh, wow. Look at that guy go. Oh, he's nowhere near ready. Nope. Look at that. Oh, a big fish, too. I get some line on him. And this is just like hunting. I mean, we had to really stalk this fish. And I just yeah. blown another one where I made uh, a bad nice. cast. But this one it was just classic, it was perfect. So I've got a fast action eight weight rod. And I'm using about a 10 foot leader. Oh, look at nice. this fish. Oh yeah, that's a nice fish. He was really rooting up the mud. Yeah. <laughs> and into the backing again. Oh. I think this guy is almost ready to come in. Wow. You get him? Yep. Good awesome. job. Oh. Wow. Oh yeah, it's it's in his twenties. It's got some fatness. Look to at it. The, look at that. And she's she's hasn't spawned. That's probably why. She's got more yes. than belly there. Awesome. That is awesome. Oh. <laughs> Not bad for my first big Quinny carp. There we go. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Made it easy. Oh wow. Beautiful fish. Oh man, that is sweet. Just wait for them to kick on their own? Yep. Enough that he can leave my hand. Right oh, look at that. Wow. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Colin. Thanks, Glenn. Got out of the boat. I'm gonna do some uh, stalking for a carp. So I'm just scouting out the areas to see if I see any black shadows swimming around or any puffs of smoke uh, of the fish rooting up the, the bottom for food. And I'm just creeping in really slowly. I know the fish are in here. I've seen them here before. Um, when we were out in the boats, they're looking for uh, fish. Uh, one of the key points is looking for feeding fish too. And the biggest thing is seeing tails up in the air. Also, you'll see clouds of dirt as well. But another key point, if you don't see any of that, I'm wondering if the carp are around, you'll see uh, grass like this floating around. And what they do, they're, they're uprooting it and um, siphoning out their food amongst this uh, grass weed. So you know that there's carp in the area and they are feeding, but that's a good uh, key point of knowing that there's feeding fish. I got a feeding fish in front of me, actually. Small carp. So you can get over it. 
drop it down in front of his nose. Good shot. Good shot. Yes, he did. Came along. He was coming up along the shore. He was feeding. I passed through the fly past him. I dropped it down right in front of his face. The fish was really actively feeding. And I saw him go over it and inhaled it. I just want to be careful here. There you go. Just, just make sure that you got a good control of your drag because these fish love the run and I got a lot of boulder rocks out there but I don't want to uh, nick the line on any of those rocks out there. It's our North American bonefish. He's about 10 or 12 pounds. This is what it's all about here. Carp on the fly. Let's see. Let's let him go. I think he's ready to go. Thank you very much. Good job. Uh, the season for carp would be around early June to mid-July for catching fish like these up on the reefs. Um, later on in the year, like most fish and temperatures get really warm, these fish tend to move deeper. So I would say the best time to actually go target these fish would be the first, first of June and mid-July. I would uh, bring an eight or a nine weight rod with a floating line. Just make sure that you can uh, cast accurately and for long distance. Uh-oh, get out of the wood. Saw this fish just sitting there basking. I saw him come over to it. Felt a tick. I thought I was gonna lose it when I went back into the timber. I had the bigger one right in front of me. I hope I don't spook up this whole area. Maybe I'll try to walk it down. No, 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 no. This is where the nine weight helps. You steer him out of conditions like this. He wants to go back into that wood and get me tangled and get off. And I got wood behind me too, and I want to get him back over the bay. Belly's a little bigger. Another bay quinny cart on the fly rod. I'll do a release here. Sweet. The flies used today are very simple in design and action. The nymph fly is fairly large in a 6, 8, or 10 size. Glenn has found that yellow and black patterns to be particularly effective. This pattern can simulate a number of mayfly larvae, cranefly larvae, and even caddis. The tan woolly bugger is suggestive of leeches, minnows, and even dragonfly nymphs, which inundate areas such as these flats. Unquestionably, one of the favorites for carp are crayfish patterns. Weighted crayfish patterns in tan, olive, and dark brown work exceptionally well. Small crayfish are abundant 
and exceptionally easy for carp to hunt and eat. When stocking carp on the flats and you're waiting, it's important to wear shirts and hats that will help you blend in. Carp have good eyesight and if you're wearing bright colors or reflective shirts, you will spook these fish. Camouflage shirts work well, as do sky-colored tops. Slow wading and methodical walking movements are critical. If you create excessive waves or noise, you'll alert the carp to your presence. Once spooked, then it's time to move on, as these fish will not take a fly. When presenting your fly, try to gently drop the fly in front of the fish. If there's a large splash, it usually scares the fish and then you're done. Soft presentations are critical to success. Slow movements, using a sidearm cast, gentle presentations, and wearing the right clothes for the conditions will all help you during the stalking of these exceptionally spooky fish. But that's why they're so much fun to catch because they're such a challenge. Having conditions like this, you look at it as like all oh, this perfectly nice calm water and it makes it great for seeing fish, but also it's also hard because you have to be super quiet. You gotta super sneak up on them and then you gotta cast them accurately and quietly so they don't get spooked away from the fly hitting the water or your line hitting the water. So even though we've had some great conditions with sun and and wind, it's still hard to catch these fish in these conditions. Thank you, Tony. Oh, oh, got him. Yeah, yeah I saw it. his mouth open up. Yeah. Nice. Whoa. Whoa. Here, here yep. I'm good, I'm good. It's clear, it's clear, it's clear. <laughs> All right. <laughs> He turned around. Yeah, he, he know, actually I... turned around, and, and like you said, I saw the lip move, and then I set the hook. I wish all of them did that. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's a good fly. Oh. So, we cast about, what, five, six fish at least. There's a whole pile of them in there, and I couldn't get any of them to take interest in it, especially that one big school, and they're a really big fish. And we saw this one, and I cast behind him. Oh, he's going up. If I can clear that weed. Yeah. So you don't have that issue. Well, this guy's going to the open. Yeah, he's going out to the deep water. He's really going out. I'll get this weed when you come okay. in. Okay. Yeah. He's coming at me. Got him back on the line. I don't want to Line's back on the reel. There he is. Wow. Power of these fish. It's incredible how strong they are. Yeah, he really chased it. Good. I think he's getting close. See the fly? Can you get behind me? Yep. Now okay. above the top. All right. He's got the line wrapped right around him. Okay. Good job. Good yeah. job, Nate. Wow, you're doing good. Look at his eyes, that fish. Isn't that sweet? I gotta tell you, this is so much fun catching these on a fly. It really is a great sport. I mean, you've got to hunt, you gotta use stealth, you gotta use technique, the right fly, right presentation. If you don't put it in right, they go. It's it's tough, but when you get one, it's so rewarding. Well, like all great fishing trips. Unfortunately, they've got to come to an end. And I really enjoyed carp fishing. I've done it before, 
but doing it here in the Bay of Quinte was really fantastic. It was sight fishing, the fish were super spooky, and we had to do everything just right. But when we got them, boy, big fish. In fact, that was the biggest carp I've ever gotten to fly. Hope you enjoyed today's show and you learned a lot. For more information about this show and others in our series, go to our website, thenewflyfisher.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week. The new Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to Superfly, Fly Fishing Made Easy, Umpqua Feather Merchants, Scientific Anglers, Ontario Sunset Country Tourism Association, Algoma Country, Newfoundland and Labrador Outfitters Association, Ontario, yours to discover, Orvis Sporting Traditions, 